Hi, my name is Vicki Sandercock. I work here at the Quincy Art Center. I do a lot of teaching. And they asked me to come over today and uh, do a little demonstration of throwing on the wheel with clay. Um, so I'm gonna start by kind of showing you what the wheel looks like. Okay, this is what the clay goes on. Um, and then over here is a little guy that you can press to show or to show you how fast or slow you want it to go. You can slow it down a little bit if you want. Okay, so you can control the speed of the wheel. So we also um, have tools, tools that we use when we throw. You need water. You got to have water for sure, okay? That uh, clay needs to be nice and slick. Um, sponges help with uh, various things from just putting water on the clay to helping you form the clay. I use various tools. This guy is a wire cutter. This helps me to cut the clay, really for any kind of clay cutting, but this one, it helps me to cut the clay right off the wheel. Okay, little tools here and there for shaping or cutting, like if I need to cut the rim off a little bit, if it's a little wonky, I'll use that guy. Um, of course, this is a big ball of clay. Clay comes in lots of different colors, depending on what minerals are in it. Um, it's nice and round here. And what is clay? Well, I always tell my clay kids that clay is uh, fancy dirt. And sometimes they'll add a few things to it to make it work nicely. And if you want it to fire at different temperatures, they'll add various things for that as well. So right here we have this nice little chart. It's got a little clay on it, that's okay. I've got lots of clay on myself. So this is gonna, we're gonna be throwing on the wheel. Throwing means just putting the clay on the wheel and forming it and to create something like a bowl or a vase or some nice vessel. All right, but before you begin, if you notice right here, you always wedge your clay. So mine looks nice and round because what I did before I'm doing this is I wedged it. And wedges, uh, wedging is kind of like when you're baking bread, you knead the bread, you work it really well to push out all the uh, uh, air bubbles. If you have any air bubbles in your clay when it's heating, all that uh, heat inside the bubble will expand and it wants to push through because the clay is also shrinking as it's firing and your piece can go kablooey or crack or hopefully just crack or maybe sometimes it works out okay, but not always. All right, so once you get it wedged, we're gonna throw it on the center of the wheel, okay? Then we're gonna center the clay. So I'll get my kick, or I'll get the wheel going as fast as possible to center it completely in the middle as much as possible. All right, you want it to be as perfectly centered as possible because it's kind of wonky. Your piece is gonna be wonky and you're not gonna be able to correct that at a certain point, okay? And it'll, be, it'll also be kind of unlevel at the top as well, which is why you have this nice little tool to kind of cut that top off and maybe kind of work it a little bit more if it's possibly savable. All right, so the next two set step is to enter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my thumbs into this big old ball of clay, make a big old hole, but you don't wanna go all the way down to the bottom of the wheel or you'll have a hole in the bottom of your piece. So that's kind of a, a little tricky. Um, the third step is I'm gonna push basically from the inside and the outside of the clay or of the piece, and I'm gonna move it up, calling pulling. I basically put my fingers together, press into the clay and pull up the side of the wall of whatever I'm working on. And that helps to compress the clay. It helps the clay to expand and get taller or wider if you're doing a bowl, okay? All right, now, the first thing I'm gonna do before I start this, I have to make sure this guy is stuck really well to the wheel because if it moves around on me, I'm not gonna get anywhere, okay? So I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of water. And this kind of cleans your wheel off too. There's some white clay on here. I might not want on my red clay. This will turn kind of red after it's fired. And I don't get it super duper wet. If I get it too wet, it will slip around and slide around. I just get it wet enough to that, for that it sticks once I get it on there and then I really, Pull it down, push it down, okay? Now this is a little bit bigger of a piece that I usually use, but I thought it would be better for filming purposes. So do you see how it's really wobbly? All right, I need to push this, kind of center it. I center from, I push from the side and I push from the top to get it nice and centered in the middle. 
I need water for that. Because if I don't have water, all that friction is just going to make me push it right off of, off of the wheel. Okay, so the water helps the hands to kind of slide. So I like a little water on my clay. I like a little water on my hands. And I always kind of keep this in my hand as well to kind of help me. So I'm going to get started. This is a big guy, so I need to put my back into it. So I got to use my back and I use my legs. I press in, I get it. What I need is leverage because I don't want my hands to do this. I got to have nice steady hands. So I kind of put my elbows into my thighs squeeze my elbows into my side and I get this guy going as fast as I can so, so notice how I'm pushing from the side and I'm pressing from the top okay so I'm gonna try to enter from the very center again because we don't want it to be wobbly I personally I just kind of lightly run my thumbs across the top I get to the center, I'll feel a little dip. There it is. There's that dip. Okay, so I throw a little water on there because as I push my thumbs in, it's going to get dry. So I have a little, little bucket of water there. So throw my elbows into the side. I kind of get my leverage going. And then I just really quickly push down. Okay, so now I've pushed into the clay with my thumbs and I didn't go all the way to the bottom. Remember, you don't want a hole in the bottom of your piece. I'm gonna push it open. So basically I'm gonna bring my fingers in the side and side I'm gonna push the walls outward to put it, to open up the piece so I have a nice bottom. So a lot of people do it this, this different ways. I learned a different way in college. I have small hands, small wrists. So you kind of have to adjust to your body type. So I'm just kind of running my fingers along the bottom as I pull it out. So if you notice in there, I'm creating a bottom to my piece. Can you see that? And I have a nice piece or a nice bottom. And I can open this a little bit wider if I want, depending on what I'm creating. And so that's going to be the bottom or the foot. When something spins, it wants to move out. So this clay is really dying to move outward. So I have to be really careful. If it's really wet, it would just automatically do that, okay? And every once in a while, I'll kind of come in and kind of recenter, okay? All right, now I kind of get some of that water out of the bottom. Too much water, your clay's gonna suck it up. And before you know it, this is gonna turn into a big old ball of mush. Okay, so it's kind of tricky. You have to be careful about how much water you use and how quickly you throw. If you take a really long time to throw a piece, you're probably going to lose it because it's going to get too wet and mushy. Now, this next part is called pulling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my sides up, okay? I want to make sure it's nice and wet so my hands can slide and it doesn't get caught in the clay. So I just basically, I kind of hook my thumbs a little bit pull my elbows into my side to get some nice leverage. And I squeeze that clay at the bottom as I move it up. Sometimes I'll kind of bring it in only because remember, the clay wants to move out. I bring my fingers like this, kind of like I'm touching, okay? And I pull it up and I kind of hold my fingers and my hands in the same spot. I don't do this as I'm coming up. This way I kind of keep a nice, consistent wall. But once you get to a certain point, Generally, when you get some height, when it gets a little taller, right, and a, a little bit wetter, you definitely want to slow your wheel down. Okay, so 
I'm squeezing the clay as I'm coming up. All right, see that? Squeezing my fingers together. Now, why don't my hands do this? Well, because I'm really pushing my elbows into the side. I'm kind of hooking my thumbs if I have the room to do that. And I'm kind of getting a nice leverage going so I don't, You can kind of shape it and guide it as you're moving up. Okay. People use different shapes to, to, to do, or different tools to shape their pieces as well. I don't you do that as much for some reason. I just, I feel like I have to have my fingers and my hands on the clay the whole time. Now the top, luckily doesn't look too wobbly. Now if it was higher on one side and on the other, that men, would mean that I didn't have my clay centered when I started. Okay, so if it was too high on one side, I would use this little tool and kind of poke, poke it in bring a whole piece off the top to kind of even it off. Otherwise, the other thing you can do is, I might add just a little water, okay? And then I kind of like get a nice lip going there. done this a lot of times and he's kind of wet and thin at the bottom. If I play with it too much more, I'm going to lose it. So you have to learn how to work with your clay. You can't, you, you can dominate it and control it to a certain extent, but sometimes you just kind of let, let, have to let that clay speak to you as well. Okay. And that's kind of what life's all about anyway, isn't it? All right. So I'm just going to smooth this out just because don't want all those drippy drips. Now later, I can let this sit for a while and come back with a sponge or another tool and maybe shape it a little bit more once it firms up a little bit, okay? But at this point, I'm gonna kind of show you what you do to get it off, okay? getting your hands dirty I don't know what to tell you and then I go nice and slow that way it's kind of cutting consistently all the way through so this is Vicki Sandercock at the Quincy Arts Center thanks for stopping by I had fun doing this with you guys and we made it through we got a nice little piece going here I'll see you later